Well hello and welcome to another Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I shall be making over the BP Auto Tanker. I chose this vehicle as it is somewhat unusual. I must confess I never knew that these existed but I did a little bit of research and yes it was a real petrol tanker. So this model has got a lot of paint chips. The stickers or decals are scratched and chipped. It uh, definitely needs a makeover to make it look like new again. The base has also uh, got some paint missing. The axles are a little bit rusty but not too bad but the wheels are in absolutely perfect condition. So what I'm going to do first as always is to separate the base from the body. Drill out this little rivet and lo and behold the base should just simply detach. Sometimes I have to give it a bit of a tease. A little flat bladed screwdriver comes in handy, there we go, look at that. And it's held in at the front by a little tab that goes in a small slot. Now I'm going to take out this plastic piece which is the green windscreen. That's held in with another rivet. I've got to be very very careful here that I do not drill through the roof of the cabin as I've done in the past now and again so I'm going real careful and I'm using a really large drill here with a shallow tip so that hopefully I can take that collar of the rivet off without going too deep into the metal and there we go now I'm going to remove the wheels these axles are great because they're slightly over length which means I can reuse them no worries now uh, you're going to uh, not like this but I'm going to put a little dab of engine oil on my fingertip and that'll help the axles to spin whilst I'm using my Dremel to remove the, uh, the burr on the end. There you can just see it now. There's one on each end of each axle so you've just got to run the Dremel on it very gently and eventually you, you can do this. So I'll quickly do that to all four. Lovely. This is going really good. Oh, actually a little bit of uh, plastic axle mount broke off the wheel. Uh, it's not much of an issue, but that's my fault because I was probably being too, too keen and too eager, not taking my time. So I'm back to poly stripper for stripping the paint. Here we go. Um, now, these days I tip it into a disposable container. It's easier than uh, fishing it out of the uh, can using your, your paintbrush. Always apply it liberally. Um, this is an old can and I think the older it gets, the less effective it can be. So, um, let's see. Let's see how long it takes to loosen this paint. After I've left the paint for a few minutes and it's softened, I then, uh, using a toothbrush and some water, I just, uh, as your regular viewers know, I uh, remove the blistered paint. Uh, as I said, this is older product I'm using, so I'm thinking uh, that could be the reason why it wasn't as effective as, as it could have been. So I'm going to get some new probably tomorrow nip down to the local hardware store and get some so what I've had to do is repeat the process you see until I'm happy that there's not any paint left on the vehicle there will always be tiny little bits after the paint stripping that's why I use these dental picks to just chip away try and get every little scrap of paint off now the interior I'm not too bothered about because you won't ever see that and uh, in the real world when you pull these things apart they actually look quite tatty on the inside. There's a lot of intricate details on the top of this uh, vehicle. Trapped a lot of paint. 
this walkway for the driver to check the hatches uh, it was particularly awkward I had to use a wire brush in a drill to get that off and that's the screw I'm going to put the base back on with and I used this small tap to cut the thread to accept the screw that's a close-up of the screw there so here it is I've given it a buff up with some wire wool also uh, it's a strange one this because it's got headlights and indicators uh, but I couldn't find a door on it anyway I found this picture online and lo and behold the door is smack bang in the front of the cabin there that big square that has BP written on it you'll see it at the end um, I thought that the driver had to walk along the top there and go in through this uh, sunroof but uh, apparently not he goes in the front when you think about it it makes so much more sense close up at the back there I don't know what all that is and these uh, these hatches are quite detailed loads of little rivet details there the reason there's so many hatches is because there's like one hatch for each compartment the vehicle's got multiple compartments because when they're full of fuel if the driver slams the brakes on going into a roundabout for example the fuel would slop around inside and uh, throw him off off track that's a standard feature in uh, fuel tankers by the way I'm using Tamiya fine primer as an undercoat on this model same for the base whilst I'm waiting for the paint dry I'll cut myself up some uh, disposable work mats that I make from cardboard boxes uh, I'm getting pretty good at it I can make like 20 of these in a minute when I get going so I'll just do some more okay uh, I've got enough mats so now I shall get back into the model this is a close-up of the plastic windscreen it's not too bad I've seen a lot worse um, but it could do with a little bit of TLC so I'll give it a polish with some metal polish just to remove some of those minor imperfections I'm using a cotton bud and applying it with just some light pressure and then giving it a buff with a cloth afterwards now the finishing touch is to coat it with some self-shining floor polish and it is a fantastic trick that somebody told me about online and uh, it really makes them look brand new makes the windscreens look brand new all you do is you just gently submerge it in the solution and you pull it out and you ensure that there are no bubbles air bubbles on it and you just sit it on a piece of kitchen paper and cover it up with a tub so it doesn't get any dust on it and after about an hour this is what you should be left with I'm going to be using Humbrol enamel paints for this job it's a beautiful yellow and green that closely match the BP colors and because I'm going to be spraying the paint I'm going to thin it with some white thinners roughly 50 50 as always I'm spraying in my spray booth and keeping the model on the move so there's no runs occur now this model is two-tone so I'm gonna to have to mask it off around this line all the way around front and back so I'm using some Tamiya masking tape for that and then I'm going to use normal household masking tape for the roof and the rest of the model that I don't want painted green this is very time-consuming to get it accurate you may need to move it from time to time a 
and then I'm just going around all the details the little ridges with a toothpick and just making sure that that tape is pressed firmly down to try and resist any bleeding of the paint that I'm going to paint on the bottom there's a tricky bit there near the front door I can see the potential for some paint to get up in there in the corners so I did my best to prevent that from happening what am I doing here I'm painting it yellow again that way the edge of the masking tape should be sealed by the yellow paint and if anything bleeds when the masking tape is removed you won't notice it because it will be yellow on yellow so now I have to wait another day for that to dry before I can paint the green on so I still leave it masked up for now and just set it aside now I'm going to look at some BP stickers or decals that I purchased online at least that's what I thought these were so I had this uh, caravan that I'll be doing up probably one day soon and I'm using it as a test piece because it's yellow I thought oh, I'll see what these uh, st stickers look like on something yellow because they look very thin and inferior anyway after I soaked them in water for a while I kind of started worrying them because the actual sticker wasn't separating from the backing sheet anyway it uh, dawned on me after a little while that they were in fact stickers printed on postal packing services sticky back paper so uh, I went ahead and kind of stuck one on to see what it looked like and I actually wasn't that very happy with it so I figured you know what I can make my own and I'll make it better than that so I drew out a rough sketch of the stickers that I wanted and I actually measured from the original model the dimensions of the areas where the stickers are going to go and this is what I came up with here are three BP logos all the same but different I've decided to use the bottom one for my water slide decals here's the first printout of my design on some water slide decal paper the blue background is to assist me to cut them out accurately now finally it's time to spray the lower portion of the model with that beautiful BP green as I call it not much to say here other than I'm uh, giving it several light coats and concentrating um, on just trying to get even coverage all over not forgetting the insides of the mud guards so another day goes by and it is time for the grand reveal which can be good or bad or anywhere in between now first first impressions were quite favorable then I started to look a little bit closer some of the yellow paint was pulled off there there's a little bit of uh, quirkiness going on around there there's a little bit of green bleed on the back this side's not too bad but inside the window frame and there's some spray come up from inside because I didn't think to mask the base anyway I don't know why I was worrying about it because I went ahead and sprayed some top coat over it and I ended up having to strip the vehicle back and start again Oh well, never mind. Uh, I went ahead and I thought I would freshen up the wheels with a black wash of Tamiya Gloss Black. I made the wire frame by uh, putting a hook in the drill chuck and spinning it up. This was great because I could paint one side of the wheel and as it was turning it would run away from the brush and separate the wheels for drying. Not a bad little setup. The axles were a bit rusty so I buffed those up with some uh, emery paper 
And here's a picture of the base and the wheels and axles ready to go back together. Using my famous axle reforming machine, I gave it a real workout here with four axles for this model. For those who don't know, it's just two modified nails with a little cup drilled in the end of them. And with a little bit of pressure, light pressure, they reform the ends of the axles and prevent the wheels from falling off, which is always a good thing. And the finished product is quite neat. One more after this. See, that's taken a while. There we go, that's the last one. Beautiful. Well, at least that worked out. Stuck the paint up, but the, the wheels look all right. And it rolls pretty freely too. So, take two. I've now repainted the model a second time. I've put the windscreen in. And I'm showing you the screw that I'm going to use to put the base back on. So... There's that tab I was speaking about early on in the video. It goes in that little slot there. So that goes in first and then the back swings down. And we put the colour matched rivet in. I always like the look of these. Very nice finish underneath there. Now I'm going to put on these homemade water slide decals or transfers. I'm never too sure which word to use. So I'm trimming them as accurately as possible and giving them a quick test fit. Looking good. So first I moisten the body of the model. Put the water slide transfer in the water. Wait till the transfer separates from the backing sheet. Hold it onto the model pull away the backing sheet, reposition the sticker or decal transfer and then squeegee out any excess moisture using paper towel and cotton buds. It's as easy as that. Actually it's very difficult. Had a few problems with this. It's such a large decal to put down in one hit that uh, it got air bubbles under it and creases that I thought I wasn't going to be able to get out, but I did in the end. So that's both of the sides done. Not looking too shabby. That one's a little bit crooked, but just like the real thing just like the real model this one's a tiddly little one very fiddly to get this out of the water see it's already separated I'm starting to worry you can see my hands shaking very tricky I've got to use a toothpick for this one it's so small and then tuck it into the corners that's the door remember it's actually like um, a saloon door it's a uh, got a split down the middle and the, the both doors swing inwards not on the model on the real thing now the last decal is going on this is a world first for me these are the first decals I've ever made printed them off on my home computer with my home printer onto some special paper and I might go into more details one day uh, show show how I made it happen but I think this video has gone on for long enough it's nearly 20 minutes here we go so this is what I started with pretty shabby looking I mean I've seen worse but it needed a makeover I felt and here's what it looks like now I painted the headlights in too with the chrome pen Now I know it's not perfect, it's very very difficult for me to do, especially the masking of the paint. But uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe got some 
good information out of it. Now you know the kind of mistakes that can happen. Finally, this BP auto tanker feels at home alongside his BP brothers. Oh, and here's a reproduction box I made just for the hell of it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you come back soon. Oh, hold your breath. Stand <laughs> over there. Isn't it? Try to get a nice yeah, boring background. No, it's a good background. Oh, this isn't supposed to go all bubbly. I'm supposed to be filming this. <laughs> Got all bubbles in it. F off! It's all bubbly. <laughs> <laughs>